The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Pickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We got all the markets back in the red. Quite a yo-yo week we've got going so far. Monday's action all in the red. Yesterday, we come soaring back, getting back basically all of Monday's losses. Remarkable turnaround. But guess what? You wake up this morning and the market basically right back at Monday's lows. Right now in the S&Ps, you're down 38 points at 42.95. But we were at a price level of 42.75. So you were down 60, 60 s and points. And you see, zooming in on the action yesterday, there's your close. We sold off into the close. You had a high yesterday of 43.60. We closed out the action at about 43.35. So you give up 25 points into the close. And then you trade down to that overnight low of 42.73. So when you back things up from the highs yesterday to the lows that we're talking about, you're talking about 85 points, almost 2%. This market traded from the highs at about 3 o'clock yesterday to the lows we had at about 5.30 this morning. Over in Europe, big-time negative action this morning. DAX down 1 and 2 thirds percent, about 1.7 percent. The DAX is down right now. FTSE is down 1.2. Cacarole is down 1.5 percent. So all of that weighing on our markets. NASDAQ 100 down 138 points. That's down 9 tenths percent. And you see the action in terms of Monday, right? You accelerate lower. Tuesday, as I said, you get it all back, which is remarkable, folks. You're talking about almost 400 points from highs to lows, and we did it again basically overnight. As we trade down to 14,000, about 420, we've bounced about 100 points from those lows. 14,515, the Dow is down almost 300 at 33,900. You got the Russell off 22 points at 2201. Bitcoin continuing to trade higher. I mean, check out Bitcoin, 53,400. No matter what the market has done this week, you've seen strength in Bitcoin. You're actually now above the highs that we had September 7th. That high was 53,000 and change. Yes, 53,125. We're trading 53,340 in the price of Bitcoin. You would pull back to exactly the 50% retracement from the run we had in the beginning of July. Crude trading a little bit lower, just giving back some of the gains it's had recently. I mean, crude over the last six weeks or so has traded from $61 up to $79.78, putting it on the short term, the short time frame chart this morning 2 a.m 79 78 we almost had an 80 handle natural gas pulling back in a big way look at this drop off it really drops at about 6 30 this morning from six dollars and 45 cents we're trading at 596 in natural gas gold's down about two dollars at 1758 we got silver negative by 15 cents at 2245 and we jump to notes and bonds right now we're looking at a yield of 1.52 percent overnight you had lower price and higher yield since about 2 a.m. Eastern time, though. You've clawed back those losses in terms of the price action. And right now, we're flat in the tenure at 1.52%. We jump over to the volatility index. The VIX, 22.95. Almost made it under 20 yesterday. We got to 20 and change. 20.62 was the low, I believe. Overnight, right back up to 24. You put this thing on a daily the VIX with a sustained level of action. I talked about yesterday uh, that it was the about nine out of 12 days that we had been above the $20 price point for the VIX, talking about a sustained rally. We had not seen that type of a rally, and today it's, it's holding as well. As this market continues to be volatile, I'm going to jump to the NASDAQ 100 real quick, taking a look at the Qs. Uh, what's interesting here is we rolled over from, from the top of this channel line all the way to the bottom, that bounce you got yesterday uh, and today's bar, not quite on this chart yet. Okay, so you're going to have this bar down at about 354, the next bar that's going to open on the opening bell in 19 minutes from right now. Uh, but, but something to keep your eye on on the cues. Now, this is a daily going back a year. We'll stretch it back a little bit further to see where this thing starts. You're talking about from September of last year, the lows we had in September, the market takes off in November. Uh, 
you have highs to highs to highs. You got lows to lows to lows. Pretty defined channel line. We're right at the bottom of that in these tech stocks right now. In the NASDAQ 100, you got the Qs down $3.38 this morning, pushing about three fifty four. Now, I'm going to zoom in on the action. I mean, look at that bounce, folks. Remarkable. Look at that bounce, right? I've had this this channel line on, on the Qs for a while, and we literally bounce almost to the penny at 5.30, 5.45 this morning. And as you can see, the Qs are up almost two bucks. So keep your eye maybe on that 3.52 price point on the Qs as you get a pretty well-defined channel line there. in the Qs, you're bumping up against the bottom portion of it. Pretty remarkable that you trade 25 points from the higher point to the lower point, but you're still well within that channel line that is upward and to the right for positive prices. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks this morning uh, before we get into some of the fundamental news. You got Amazon down a bit this morning. Trading at 31.95, Amazon right in the middle of a long-term consolidation between about 2,900 and 3,500, right in the middle of that area. If you look where we were in terms of back in March of last year when Amazon really took off the COVID lows, if you ever get a pullback, I mean that 382 is basically the bottom area of that consolidation. You're looking for a buy on Amazon. Boy, you get it under 3000 If you're a long-term investor, I would at least think about getting into that. The tough part about Amazon, a partial position, even one share costs you $3,000. Uh, but that's a defined channel line. We're back to prices that we've been trading at, folks, for the better part of 16 months ago in Amazon, trading at 3221 Microsoft shares this morning down a bit as well. Of course, all these stocks are going to look a little bit different from Amazon as Amazon has... Uh, struggled as some of the other tech stocks will put it back on a daily have accelerated higher you got microsoft within about 15 17 bucks of their all-time highs you're going to open a little bit lower this morning google shares going to open about 2700 from 2723 now google had been in that channel line you broke up below it for the first time last week uh we'll see how google reacts when you potentially challenge the channel line yet again but uh well-defined channel line all the way from November, October of last year and breaking below that channel line for the first time in a while. And we'll jump to what else we got going on. Let's jump to the numbers we get this morning in terms of ADP. 568,000 private payrolls for the month of September. The market was looking for 425. This ahead of Friday's non-farm payrolls number. Leisure and hospitality sector led creation with 226,000 hires. Most of these jobs coming from big companies, hotel chains, et cetera. Companies with 500 and more employees led job creation with 390. Okay, you only came in at 568. That means you leave only 178,000 jobs created in the private sector for companies under 500, 000, uh, 500 employees. Private jobs, there you go, 568. Now you get into uh, a breakdown of some of these hires. As we said, leisure and hospitality, 226,000. Okay, though the industry... Now, let's, let's just read, because the sector's hard hit, as we all know, okay? Establishments are struggling with labor shortages despite nearly 2 million job openings. We talked to Kevin Hanks after this break. He's talked about it many times. All those job openings uh, looking to pair with the many employees that are out of work right now. Though the industry, which includes bars, restaurants, hotels, and the like, has about 800,000 more workers employed than a year ago. Its unemployment rate remains at 9.1% compared to the national rate of 5.2 right now. Much of the hiring... Companies with 500 employees, 390,000. Small businesses, which are the engine of this country, folks. Uh, fewer than 50 workers, adding just 63,000 jobs. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more. Services, 466,000 new hires. Helped by education and health services in there as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hicks, a fast market TD Ameritrade Trade Network. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. 
CFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the inventor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, everybody. We got the S&Ps right now, negative by 32 points, catching a little bit of a bit off the overnight lows. You were down in the S&Ps looking at the futures contract on the Thinkorswim platform, 42.73. So you've clawed back 30 points almost from those lows, still negative by about three quarters of percent. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups in the option market, talking about defined risk. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, you know, futures getting a nice lift here, bouncing back from a pretty strong ADP number that came out, Tommy. You know, remember, you can connect the dots in this market and the choppiness that happened in September back to that. September 3rd payrolls number. And so what the number that, that just came out, you know, that's a pretty substantial beat. And that throws into uh, a little question how big this number is going to be tomorrow. And maybe you and I talked about it earlier in the week. Maybe we're setting up for a nice beat here in terms of non-farm payrolls. Remember, this number came out 568,000, right? The uh, That is more than... The, the payrolls number is supposed to be, and this is just the private part. So, you know, the the private sector of today's payrolls. So, I, I think you know the 475,000 expected jobs that you know the the consensus was for Friday. That's probably going to drift a little higher, and maybe Tommy, some of those seven and a half million people coming off uh, benefits, and that 10.9 million jobs. Maybe they're starting to meet up in the middle here, and that's a really good thing for the U.S. economy. Maybe the miss from last week is just, or from last month, is just going to be delayed until the next couple of months. I don't expect all those jobs to come back, but good solid beats will uh, definitely um, ease some fears in this market, Tommy. Yeah, at some point, we got to make up those jobs, Kevin, right? Whether they come now or in the future, we've had a few months of misses almost. I mean, I think the three-month average might be around 700, but like you said, the last number in there was 250 and change in terms of numbers that we got for August payrolls. 
That was on September 3rd. That was a high print in the S&P futures. We come back from Labor Day weekend. We have a little bit of a tough September. Volatility persisting into October for sure. I was listening to the program you guys were doing yesterday on Fast Market. Now, as we talked about yesterday when you were on the program, talking about maybe some of the companies, the tech stocks that have pulled back, I found it interesting. You were talking about Amazon. Now, all of these companies were surging higher. And you said, you know, well, we, we came up with this show idea on Monday when you had Amazon down below 3,200. It was up to 30. 3260 yesterday while this morning kevin it was back under 3200 man this market giving um, buyers for that dip maybe kind of the possibility as in it's not like we're potentially off to the races forever right now we're going to have some volatility in the months coming and i just really like that segment you guys were talking about as you see some of these tech stocks pull back i got an article in bloomberg i'm going to talk about later just talking about valuations for the first time in these tech stocks yep coming back to almost where the S&P 500 is, which is remarkable when you look at kind of some of the pullbacks we've had, like Amazon back at about 3,200 this morning. Exactly, Tommy. People talking about, you know, corrections in the market. Well, look at some of these. I mean, some of these big names like Microsoft, like Amazon, like obviously Facebook, which has been in the news lately, they're significantly off their highs. And over what, really, right? Not necessarily lack of earnings, Maybe some press, maybe some just uncertainty about the market, maybe some uncertainty about rising interest rates. But, man, you know, the, the, these companies make so much money. And, and like I said uh, yesterday on the show, Amazon is expecting record profits and sales for this quarter, the most ever. So, and that's coming up. Now, earnings per share might be lower than a year ago. The comps are going to be difficult, but... You know, when you get expectations for lower comps like that, you're really setting yourself up for a beat here. So, yeah, these stocks are all worth watching, all worth trading down here, um, carefully, of course. But nevertheless, these are good markets for looking at. You've got a VIX now over 22 and a half. So that puts more premium in options. It's a great time to be a, an options trader, Tommy. I think it's a great time to be a trader in general, man. For so long, we had that VIX, Kevin, stuck. I mean, it seems almost, uh, you know, generations ago that we were stuck at 11 or 12 in the VIX for an extended period of time. Right now, we're sitting at about 22 and change. Uh, the article I had up here, Kevin, it's interesting. So they were talking about the NYSE FANG Plus Index. I believe this is 10 equities of basically FANG um, all the big tech stocks in there, 27.6 times estimated earnings for the coming year versus 20.2 times the S&P 500. That's the narrowest premium since December of 2018. And uh, the, the lowest company in there uh, among the U.S. members, Facebook, as you mentioned, 19 times earning, actually 19 times earnings, now actually cheaper, Kevin, Facebook than the S&P 500 to kind of go to what you were saying there. Pretty remarkable, some of those statistics. So we come into Wednesday trading. We got the S&Ps down 35, Kevin. We do have some companies out there this week, but all eyes kind of point to Friday. What are you guys going to be talking about on the program coming up today? Today's a good one because uh, we're going to start out in, in the first segment of the show talking about Netflix and the incredible run that this has had. And then we've got GM Investor Day today. So we're going to look nice. at, uh, like Billy is going to do a presentation on General Motors and the evolution of that company. And then that's going to naturally evolve into the third segment where we talk about Tesla, Tommy. So all things autos in the second and third uh, segment. And then in the first segment, we're going to look at what is going on with Netflix. Netflix, man. They were talking about Netflix and the Tiger's Den earlier, talking about maybe uh, killing to maybe have the opportunity to get Netflix under 600 again, as this thing is off to the races to 632 this morning at 634.81. Uh, yeah, just remarkable across the board. And GM, I was reading about what they're going to be talking about. $50 billion, that cruise, robo-taxis, pretty remarkable, the future, Kevin. It's not a matter of if, but when. We're going to be jumping in those robo-taxis. And GM, uh, seems like they're pretty confident that they'll be able to start ringing that cash register, whether it's next year or 2023, to the tune of $50 billion in revenue. Pretty remarkable to be starting a business, Kevin, that you don't even have any cash yet, and you're going to put out a number that's potentially $50 billion sometime in the future. They're not going to tell you when yet. Kevin, they're not going to tell you when, but $50 billion they might be able to put out in that electric vehicle robo-taxi segment. Well, Kevin, we look forward to the show as always, man. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today. You have a great Wednesday, and we'll talk to you tomorrow, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. 
You too, Kevin. Take care. Folks, tune in every day. They got the new lineup with Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They do an outstanding program on Fast Market at 12 o'clock Eastern Time every day on Tiger TV. They had an outstanding show yesterday uh, walking you through, folks. And I bring up Amazon all the time. I have Amazon in my retirement account. Remarkable that you're getting this long of a consolidation of a company that is this strong, as Kevin mentioned, right? And as you, I'm a bull. I have Amazon in a long-term retirement account, okay? But revenue, record revenue coming at you this quarter, folks. And guess what? We got Christmas season coming up. You think Amazon's going to be pushing out product during Christmas season? I imagine they are. And if Amazon taught us one thing over the last 10, 15 years, as long as they're growing revenue, they will figure out a way to turn that revenue into profit. Because when they're investing, folks, you see it now. Just so I get orders from Sam's Club and Walmart, okay? They are so far behind the service level of Amazon in terms of the way boxes showed up. It seems like they're taped in half. Some of them are broken. The products aren't as reliable. You don't get as many updates for when things are delivered. You don't get the picture at your front door always. When Amazon spends some of that money to decrease the earnings, it shows in some of the services they provide. That's my experience. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps, negative 36 points on the open. We get the NASDAQ 100, negative 133 points. We get the Dow down 275 right now in the Russell, negative by 22 points. Bitcoin continuing to rise, 
since I came on the air, folks, your nine o'clock bar, that's a 15 minute bar in Bitcoin. How about just spiking a 55,000 and change? Remarkable acceleration in cryptos. You're now above, as I stated, where we were in September. I mean, next stop in Bitcoin is 65,520, folks. Maybe 60,000 is where you could chop around. But uh, man, we just traded from a price point of 41,000 on September 30th in Bitcoin. Jumping over to Ethereum. Ethereum right now up 1.5%, not quite the same acceleration. You're at 35.79. Interesting comparing these two, Ethereum, Bitcoin, you see Ethereum, not back up to where we were September 3rd, whereas you just have Bitcoin rising above that price level. Uh, you could say closer, though, to where we were in terms of 44.06 percentage-wise, not much, but Ethereum, nonetheless, up by about 1.5% today. Okay, getting back into that article real briefly, I was talking to Kevin about, because uh, he brought up some great points in terms of the tech stocks, and this is an interesting article in terms of valuations. When you're in growth stocks, folks, be careful of valuations, okay? Because no matter how great a company is, it may already be priced into the equity, okay? Tesla is the most expensive stock in the FANG Plus Index at 114 times earnings. No matter how great of a company that you think Tesla is, Man, do they have to grow in an epic fashion to come in at a growth of 114 times. Now, you back that in Facebook. Facebook, you're only talking about 19 times earnings. Well, guess what earnings go down in the future? And that ain't going to help the growth phase of everything. Uh, now, you get into where we are. Tech stocks premium to the S&P 500 is the narrowest since 2018. The spread is when you talk about the estimated earnings for the company coming year versus 20. So 27.6 times earnings for the coming year versus 20.2. You see the spread we're at. The, these 10 companies are only seven times earnings above the S&P 500, the narrowest since 2018 when markets slumped because of the US-China trade war, hawkish Federal Reserve, and falling earnings expectations. Fast forward to 2021, and the picture looks similar with the Fed at the brink of pulling back on economic stimulus and the pace of earnings upgrades in a slow lane. Listen, it's all about earnings coming this quarter, folks. There will be economic slowdowns on revenue, especially in some companies. But what's going to define stock prices over the next three to six month, months is going to be earnings. Wage control, supply issues, right? Supply constraints, supply disruptions across the board. Um, and there it is, the FANG index, 10 companies. You got Apple, Google, Amazon, uh, the 10 biggest out there in the tech sector, combined value of 8.3 trillion, excuse me, 8.7 trillion. Among them, Facebook, the cheapest at 19 times earnings. If you think Facebook is going to just completely triumph over their problems in recent history, then you should be loading up the boat because Facebook at 19 times earnings when the S&P 500 is 20 times earnings seems like a bargain. But I would be careful and I am not buying Facebook in any way, folks. I hope they have some uh, tough roads ahead because they deserve it with uh, what they're doing to society, to put it lightly. Tesla, priciest at 114 14 times. Um, mega, te mega cap tax Mega cap tech stocks, say that one 10 times fast. Mega cap tech stocks may still get cheaper though as you're open and down 1%. These were numbers off of yesterday's close. So when we have the NASDAQ 100, oh, and we shouldn't talk too quickly as all the market's catching a bid. There's your acceleration on the open. We're up to 14,552. You've clawed back more than 100 points off of the lows in the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P is surging to 4308 this morning. All right, what else we got going on? Let's jump down the line with some of the companies that are moving. Constellation had their numbers out. Uh, looks to be trading lower a little bit, down by about six tenths percent. Fast market, 12 noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, they set up a example trade on this yesterday. Um, forget the specifics of it, but it's always awesome how they set these up, folks. I think Kevin had uh, a multi-leg -leg trade. He had a calendar spread on the bullish side, and he financed that with selling a put spread. On the bearish side, if you don't know what I'm talking about, tune into the program at 12 o'clock today, folks. They walk you through it, hypothetical trades. It's a great way to learn multi-leg trades in options. It's very simple to understand. A call is the right to buy a stock. A put is the right to sell a stock. But it's pretty awesome once you get the concepts of whether it's paying for premium, selling premium, delta, theta, and they walk you through it all at noon Eastern time every trading day, folks. All right, let's jump around some of the equities that are moving this morning, the stocks making moves uh, as we pull up here. Come on, where, where am I? Uh, here we are. 
We talked about Constellation. So the uh, miss on this quarter, which is interesting, quarterly earnings of 238 a share. The consensus was 277. Revenue beat forecast. But here's the kicker, which I think saved them from this quick sell-off that we had. Not often do you miss right now on earnings, but say that we're going to raise our full year earnings outlook. But that's what they did. They actually increased its their full year earnings outlook while missing on earnings on this quarter. Uh, and the market never cares about what you did 30 days ago, folks, as long as you're going to write the ship and you tell them what you're going to do in the next 30, 60, 90, uh, 365 days. And things seem to be well with Constellation. And you're seeing it catch a bid now in the positive. This morning, all the market's catching a bid right now, which is remarkable. All right, down the line, uh, Norwegian. This is an interesting one. Uh, talking of the closing bell yesterday on CNBC, the company will have its full fleet in operation by April. Not that long, six months from now, they'll have their full fleet of ships out there cruising for the first time since the pandemic began. 75% of the ship percentage of their ships are going to be sailing by the year end. Uh, and you are actually lower, so I'm not sure what they were talking about more than that. Uh, you're down about six tenths percent. Maybe they were just lower them with the market this morning. Let's jump to some of the airline stocks and see how they're trading. We're putting it on a daily to see the run they've had recently. A little bit of a bounce, but today you're pulling back. American down 2.4 percent. Check that out. Delta down 1.5 percent right now. United down 1.5 percent. Boeing down about three quarters of a percent. I've talked about Boeing on the channel line. I pulled up that Q channel line before. Boeing right at this bottom area of that upward channel. Uh, that's an area you could look for a buy, folks. A little bit tough when you get the market, potentially with some volatility. Uh, but maybe this is a turning point as we start to see whether it's Merck's antiviral pill coming out, whether it's cruise ships saying they're going to have 100% of their ships in business within six months. Uh, maybe that's the turnaround that some of these travel stocks need. Boeing, they got a long way to go if you can catch a bid on Boeing. Uh, even if you're talking about the channel line, you just trade to the top of this channel line. Boeing's had some huge swings on either side. You're talking about almost hundred dollars. It's like a forty percent acceleration if you just make it to the top of this channel line at about three fifteen uh, on Boeing, and that's quite an if though on Boeing shares. Uh, some of the other travel stocks will jump. Airbnb down about two tenths percent. Airbnb has had quite a run recently from July or one thirty up to almost one eighty. We're back to one sixty four. We'll finish it with Expedia shares right now down about half a percent. Jumping to Uber, we have Uber in my newsletter, folks, up 2.2% today. Look at that pop. Now, I wonder if this has to do with it. There was some story out here. Uh, where are we on Uber? I know I got something up here. Come on. Is that one of the companies? No, I have an article up here then that they're talking about that you may be able to... No, there it is. They're going to track your flight so a ride home is ready when you land. Not sure that's giving it the boost this morning, but nonetheless, Uber up almost 3% as this market is catching a bid, folks. Stay tuned. We're going to be talking some Forex. We'll be talking some oil, I imagine, as well with Teddy Kegstad from Forex-Trading-Unlock. We come right back. We got the euro. Dollar moving right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P is negative 21 points right now, but markets catching a bid from the overnight session and catching a bid right on that open right now. s and is only down 21. You were down uh, to a low, folks, of 42.73. So you're talking about 38 points. We've caught a bid from those lows in the overnight session. All right, let's jump over to our man Teddy Cakes at Every Trading Day, folks. You can reach Teddy at forex-tradingunlock.com. We talked to Teddy about the Forex market every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So, where do we start, man? We've had quite a run in oil this week. I'm always mm -hmm. thinking about you as I see those crude prices climbing ever higher. We almost made it to $80 in the overnight session on Light right. Street Crude. Why don't maybe we start there so we don't rush that conversation at the end of this uh, talk? Because, mm -hmm. man, this market has been on fire recently, Teddy. And to your credit, you've been, you've been pumping it for $100. And it seems like <laughs> it's a one-way ship upward right now. What are, what are you looking at in that crude contract? Well, I'm looking for it to follow through, and I think it's going to have a ripple effect into multiple markets, you know. So I think it's going to hit everything from the S&Ps to the interest rate markets to, you know, the currency markets as well, especially the, the, the currencies that are balanced off of oil, you know, whether they're oil rich or oil poor, you know. So I well, think it's definitely going to be rocking things. And why don't could you just jump into those countries in particular? I know we talk about sure. it often, but we're always getting new listeners. When you say those countries, you know whether you're producers or consumers. Uh, mm -hmm. So we got crude rocking higher. Where do you go in your head from you take crude higher to what currencies <clears throat> do you look for that that's going to have an impact on the most uh, as okay. crude? I, I agree, it's just a, a huge influence across the board right now, which is why I ask. Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, here's here's the way I look this, at this scenario panning out. As oil gets above $80, we already know that there's a threshold in the economy. This is pre-pandemic, you know. This is when the economy was much smaller than it is now also, okay. So when oil gets above 80 and starts to maintain that, let alone get to 100 or more, we know that there's going to be a lot of dynamics to start to change. Now, the last time oil got, above, got to 100 or above, you got to realize we didn't have the inflation that we have right now. OK, so that's a huge, huge deal. It's going to make the amp the oil rally now. The amplification of its ramifications is going to be exponential compared to what it was, say, back during the Bush era, back in the early 2000s. OK, so and anyone that remembers that when you were paying, you know, for regular gas, you were spending six dollars, you know, for a gallon of gas. 
you know. So, I mean, now the taxes are higher than they were before 20 years ago, 15 years ago, you know. So, I mean, like, all these things are going to hit very, very hard. And, and it's not just the United States. It's going to hit places like Japan, okay? Like, if you look at the U.S. dollar yen, they started to break out to the upside with this as oil is moving back. You know, remember I told you the oil trade was off the table a couple months ago? Up until yes. a couple weeks ago, I said, as we get back into if we get to above 80 and towards that threshold as we go towards 100 which i'm telling you we're going to 100 you know i mean so i mean and this is going to have a big impact on the yen the u.s dollar yen even if the dollar is weak the u.s dollar yen trade i mean i tell you 116 is not far-fetched anymore if anything 122 in the yen could very easily happen by the end of the year if we see oil escalate, if it starts to really explode to the upside, where we go from 80 to say 90, 95, and we do hit this $100 threshold, you realize that even if we have a 10% correction off that, that means oil will go from 100 to 90, bounce, find support, and then go higher. You know, so and that's going to have a ripple effect in the currency markets. And then you have your supply chain issues. You know, they're, they're hard. I don't know if, what it is like completely globally, but I read last week, you know, you have over 500,000 container ships crowding the ports of the United States, Houston being one of them. So the ability, even if we had cheaper oil and we could have it all flowing and whatever, the ability for oil to get to the refineries and move from one place to another and what have you is being restricted by all. All these other ripple effects from these other things from the pandemic you know sure and and it's going to drive like the, i think the u.s dollar canada trade that bear is coming back you know i see like i see definitely see the u.s dollar yen long term trending higher u.s dollar canada we have a head and shoulders now that is formed on the daily basis you know and now we're treading looking to fall back down as oil gets stronger the Canadian dollar will be strong versus the dollar, so it doesn't matter anymore. We have true divergence in the in the in the currency market. So where the U.S. dollar is going to be strong versus the yen, it's going to be weak versus the Canada. And in 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 a normal world, you'd be like, well, how does that happen? But this is not a normal world we're living in anymore, you know. And when you look at these conditions, something like commodity, a commodity such as oil, where I don't care how much we're coming off the oil nipple. Um, all the heavy machinery is used, but we need it, you know? So, I sure. mean, like, that's not changing anytime soon. You can't just flip yeah. a switch with this stuff, you know? Yeah. And I, I, I think the ripple effects are going to be big, you know? So, I yeah. mean, the, you make the a great euro, argument. The euro also, you know, remember back in the spring when the euro was up at 122? I mean, everyone was arguing, oh, we're going to see the euro at 135, 140. And I'm like, I don't know about that one with the oil trade, <laughs> you know. And now, I mean, and I wasn't looking for it to necessarily, I never was very bearish the euro, but I'm like, I don't know about being remotely bullish the euro, you know. And now where we're at too, you see how. If you look at the dollar index, we know the major components is the euro and the pound, okay? The euro is making new lows. The pound isn't. It's trying to hold up because they're oil rich, you know? Okay. So, and it's going to have an impact. The U.S. dollar Swiss is getting strong once again, too, you know, because of these same dynamics. So, where you have the dollar strong against two European currencies, it has a trouble with the pound. And it's going to have trouble with the pound going really forward cool. for the you know so and i think the same thing is when you look at the australian dollar and new zealand dollar um you know it's because of restrictions and because of these other supply issues that they're not going to be able to get rid of their stuff i mean look at how what the what gold is doing you know and there's a move if you look at the interest rates how they're selling off right now you have this dynamic that you know the even the price of crude and the cost of carryover goes up as interest rates go up you know and that drives even more inflation which then you know all this stuff starts to become a domino effect where one chain starts to become four or five little loops you know how the dominoes spread out when you start with just one little row and they go out and these are the ripple effects you know we're coming on the 34 year cycle for fibonacci for the stock market crash of 87 you know october 17th <laughs> is just a week and a half away you know oh, so boy. and I think this perfect storm is here. You know, I think we are definitely in motion and we're going to have a wild, wild ride and we're going to see some big trends in the currencies, you know, but the it, dollar being it's a pretty bear. cool. Just to giant. And I completely agree, man. And Kevin, we were talking about kicking off the program, saying it's an awesome time to be a trader, man. And it seems like it spans whether you're in futures, equities, 
Forex, Everything. commodities, my goodness, right? Yes. Um, and I agree with the way that, listen, we have a lot of supply disruptions, man. You see it across the board. I think we're going to see mm -hmm. it all the time in these earnings coming up. And it's just so prevalent that I imagine it's going to take a year or two at a minimum to work sure. itself out when just like you talk about, ships can't right. get into port, man. We got kids at home. I'm thinking about starting shopping right now, Teddy, and I'm not joking, folks. If you have kids out there, year. man. Yeah, exactly. Get your products no now lie. because I'm not going to be waiting when everything is out. And today, like you said, it's not a normal situation. Um, and so even in my own mind, you're making decisions, right, to plan for those types of disruptions. Right. Um, and then and it's like, where do those ripple effects? So that, that's, that, I was that, just going to say, where do those ripple shortages. effects go, right? Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, man. Teddy, we appreciate the conversation. Thanks, Tom. As always, man, you have a great week. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. All right. Take care. Thanks, Teddy. Take care. Oil we'll be right back. Folks. Baby. <laughs> it's happening. Listen, I'm not stepping in front of that train. No way. Thanks, Teddy. We'll be <laughs> right back. Care. Bye. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the tiger first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the tiger first mortgage program pays seven percent per year paid monthly on secured high value buildable properties in st petersburg florida the investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First mortgage? The Tiger First mortgage program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First mortgage program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got a little bit of volatility in both directions. Let's put it on a five-minute chart to see the action so far. You make a low at about 5.30 a.m. in the S&Ps overnight. You rise right out of the gate from about 42.95 to above 43.15. We had 20 points up, and just like that, folks, in 10 minutes, we got 20 points down. You're right back to where we opened. NASDAQ 100, not quite back down to that, but we've given up a, a decent portion of the gains we had. You get the Dow down 320, actually, below where we opened in the market right now in the Russell, down about 25 points. We're going to do a little bit of a sports update. Why not? 
Major League Baseball, uh, you had the good old Red Sox getting it done versus the Yankees. Now, I do not agree with this AL one-game playoff uh, play-in wild card. Nonetheless, Red Sox beat the Yankees last night in Fenway. They will face the Tampa Bay Rays kicking things off on Thursday for the ALDS. Uh, the Red Sox come to Tampa. The Rays winning their division over the Red Sox and the Yankees. Kudos to them. The Rays just continue to struggle to get people in that arena, unfortunately. Uh, but nonetheless, Red Sox get it done last night. Uh, interesting game. Some some uh, ups and downs for both teams. Uh, but just in general, it's a tough one. You play, what is it, 162 games in the year, um, all for the volatility of one playoff game. To get into the playoffs, seems like it demeans the regular season to have one playoff game like that. Uh, Red Sox threw out Aaron Judge. I think it was in the fifth or sixth inning at home plate. A couple of my friends, New York Yankees fans, not happy at that third base coach sending uh, that player, the third base coach for the Yankees, I think he got 21 or 22 players thrown out this year. One of the statistics, one of the higher numbers out there. Point being, you got one bad play where they maybe send somebody on third base, and it demeans the whole season. Uh, one game playoff, kind of ridiculous. Baseball has got to get their act together, folks. 162 games, the regular season is almost meaningless. And then they play one game to get into the playoffs, and then they got a five-game series coming up for the ALDS. All right. What else we got? Let's just check around some of the FANG stocks as we wrap up the session, folks. We got Amazon shares this morning down two tenths. Let's take a look at Constellation uh, up to 217, down to 211 with this market. Volatility on Constellation. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Larry Pesavento with Trade What You See at 11. Fast Market at 12. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien, all this afternoon. Live programming all day, folks. Stay tuned. Be right back. <laughs> 